Two women in a London kitchen fighting for girls across the world. At the time, people were telling me how I should feel or what I should have felt. Yeah. Writer Catelyn Moran and Nimco Ali will launch the London end of a campaign being spearheaded in Africa to end female genital mutilation within a decade. For Catelyn Moran, the time is right to get involved. As a white Western woman, you know, for years this, this subject has confused me because, you know, I feel as a woman that I need to go out there and support these girls that this is happening to. But you go, you know, am I being a colonial imperialist here? You know, what am I going to do? But I just sat down and thought about this and went, no, this isn't anything to do with any particular religion or any particular country or any particular colour. This is something that someone came up with. It's not in the Quran, it's not in the Bible. Someone came up with this idea at some point. And I think if FGM didn't exist, now, the chances of someone inventing it now in the 21st century are extremely low and that is why I campaign against it. That gives me the sureness to know that I can. Then they're not going to go back into it because they it was hearing it. Nimco's story about being so cut which inspired Katlin Moran. But Nimco says for many years it was a story she couldn't bear to tell. I walked into a classroom when I was in 2006 and I came across 13 um, girls that were all born in the EU that had undergone FGM and it was in that moment that I knew that my silence was complicit. I'd emancipated myself, I'd kind of um, understood that FGM was a form of violence against women and girls and I'd moved away but, but everybody was still left with this concept that FGM is this cultural thing that happens only for cultural reason and the girls it happens to wear headscarves or look in a, in a specific way as opposed to it could happen to anybody and anywhere. Nimco says to tackle FGM here in the UK, there has to be an end to worrying about offending cultural or religious sensitivities. I would rather be somebody offended than a child go through FGM. And I think that's the simplicity of, of, of the whole thing. I, as a seven-year-old, when I had FGM, would not be offended if, so, if somebody asked my parents, are you going to take your child to be cut? Because that might have saved me from, like, you know, um, not, not, not having FGM. And once you break that cycle, that cycle is broken forever. With half a million Twitter followers, the Moran name will undoubtedly raise the profile of this issue. But as she takes on the role of celebrity campaigner, she's acutely aware of the criticisms which come with it. What else do you do when you have a public platform and some fame? You know, it's just like a useless bag of gold that you can't spend. I don't want to go to premieres, you know, I don't want to get free handbags. I've got all this fame here and all, like, you know, and this platform. And and I try and pull up as many people as I can onto this platform and go, you know, have some of my space, have some of my light. Um, you know, that's what I'm doing with this particular issue. Some of the, the most powerful material that you've written is about being poor. And yet, by the very nature of success, you move further and further away from that, that life. I mean, is it, does it then become credible for you to talk about poverty, which I know you do? I know when I was a poor 13-year-old girl in Wolverhampton, you know, I would have loved people to be speaking up about those issues and keeping my library open and making sure that my NHS stayed open and turning up to my house and, you know, possibly giving me money or some of their clothes because I didn't have any. That would have been incredibly useful. Um, again, it's, it's just down to how you spend your fame. You know, you talk a lot about being a socialist, yet you've said in an interview that you don't send your children to state school, which is always considered one of the biggest crimes of those who yes. claim to be a socialist. I mean, yeah. how do you defend that? You know, how do you to maintain credibility on that. Imagine how annoyed I am that I can't send my children to, to, to a state school. But why I'm, can't I'm, you? I'm in the black hole of Crouch End, which was on the cover of the Camden Journal, uh, the Crouch End Journal last week. You just can't get your kids into a state school here. So, or you to know, a state school that you like, or well, yeah, one that's two buses away, kind of, you know, really far away, where she can't be with her friends. So, so yeah, so no, you know, I campaign for me to never have to do that, for no one ever have to ever have to do that. And also, you know, you can't choose your children as an experiment. Yes, would I like there to be amazing comprehensive education for everybody locally in this country? Yes. Do do I write about it all the time? Yes. Could I get it? No. Have I made a fudgy compromise to make sure my children are happy? Yep. But there is no the compromise on her wish for girls everywhere. To feel normal. For being a girl to be normal. And that's the other reason why, again, this FGM campaign is so huge for me, because in a world where we're telling girls that they have to be cut to be normal and to be good, that to be born as a girl is not correct and you need to be altered, surgically altered, is, is completely incorrect. Catelyn Moran, thank you very much.